Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to review the ASUS ProArt Series PA32UCX 4K HDR monitor. Now this video is going to be a bit long, so if you want to save time, you can check out the timestamps in the video description below to jump to whichever section you are interested in. This is a review unit I just received. At the time of this review, the official retail price for this is US $3,999. Here in Singapore, it's four thousand nine hundred and ninety-nine Singapore dollars. So this is a very pricey, expensive monitor. So the main selling point here is because it can output such high brightness, you can use this monitor not only to edit HDR content, but to view HDR in HDR to see its true effect. So that really is the main selling point. Let me quickly run through the main selling points for this monitor before I unbox it and maybe explain why it's so expensive. Uh, first thing first, the PA32UCX, this monitor, this model, is different from the previous model, the PA32UC, which is a LED 4K HDR monitor. But the main difference here is this monitor, it uses mini LED which means the lights, the LED lights, they are much smaller. And because they are smaller, you can pack more of these lights onto the panel. And because of that, this monitor has a much higher brightness. The typical brightest uh, brightness is 600 nits, but I measured 640 nits with my color calibrator. If you have a HDR signal that goes into the monitor, the maximum possible brightness is 1,200 nits. So that is very bright, almost blindingly bright. Other uh, main selling points would be the support for Dolby Vision and HLG and Rack 2020. That's very important. Uh, Rack 2020 allows you to edit uh, with a much wider color gamut compared to DCI-P3, uh, especially if you're using Final Cut Pro on Mac OS, you have to choose Rack 2020 to um, be able to edit in HDR. This, by the way, it's not a paid review. So I'm going to present to you my findings and you can decide for yourself whether or not this is worth the money. So we have the monitor stand, which is huge. The monitor, the factory calibration report. You may want to pause the video if you want to read these reports. The power USB and display cables. This looks like shading hoods and that's a color calibrator. This is the i1 Display Pro color calibrator made by x -Rite. This may or may not be included together with the monitor. So if you do not have a color calibrator, you can get the monitor bundled with this color calibrator. If you already have your own color calibrator, you can choose to buy the monitor alone without this. This is the USB type C to C cable, Thunderbolt 3 cable, full size HDMI cable, full size display port cable. And here in Singapore, our power cable uses the three pin plug. The base of the stand takes up a lot of space and this is how it compares with the Apple wireless keyboard without the number pad. Here we have one hole for cable management. This is where we can adjust the height, tilt and swivel. You can choose to VESA mount this monitor if you want to. The dimensions is 10 by 10 centimeters. This monitor is about 9.7 kg and the stand is about 5 kg. This monitor is 5.5 centimeters thick and these are the ventilation holes. The monitor is curved from the edges to the center. When you're looking at the monitor from the front, the buttons are on the right side. This is the toggle, the various buttons and the power. This is for the power cable. This is the power switch, 3.5 millimeter audio jack. We have three full-size HDMI ports, version 2B. This is display port version 1.2. This is the release latch for the stand. Thunderbolt 3 in, Thunderbolt 3 out. This has 60 watts of power delivery and three USB three type A ports. Having all the ports on the bottom of the monitor can be quite inconvenient. So I'm using the front facing camera of my phone to see where the ports are. 
So the first time I power up the monitor, I can hear the fans turning, but after a while, the fans, they go silent. This monitor does not automatically detect the input, so you have to choose the input source from the menu. Let's see what we can customize with the OSD menu. So we can choose between the different color modes as RGB, Adobe RGB, Rec 2020, DCI-P3, this is the blue light filter. There are five levels. Here you can control and adjust the brightness, saturation, contrast, hue, color temperature, gamma, black level. And here we have the sharpness control. If you connect multiple input sources, here you can do picture in picture or picture beside picture. These are the different input sources and these are the OSD um, settings. And here are some quick shortcuts that you can access with the buttons behind. So if you want to quickly switch to HDR, you can press the button behind to choose the different HDR modes. Right, I've been using this monitor very intensively for the last two weeks to edit photos and videos. So let me just run through the pros and cons. I'm gonna start with the things that I do not like because the list is quite short. Now the build quality for this monitor is excellent, but the quality of the shading hood, it's very flimsy, it's very soft, and it attaches to the sides of the monitor with these uh, pins that do not attach very tightly. So oftentimes when I try to reach my pots uh, on my computer on the side, I may actually hit the shading hood and the shading hood, sometimes they come off, they detach from the monitor. Um, the other thing I don't like about this shading hood is the insides of the shading hood it's not the type of black that absorbs light so this is dark gray uh, let me show you a proper shading hood here i have a part of the banq shading hood that i'm currently using this part goes here so this is full metal construction it's very solid and inside we have black velvet that absorbs light really well so with the asus monitor when the brightness goes up or if you are working with this monitor at night you're gonna see light reflected off from the shading hood, but here you're just gonna see black because this absorbs all light. So for an expensive monitor like this, uh, it should come with way better and proper shading hoods. Second thing I don't like is the design of the buttons and the button placements. So even though there is this directional toggle to move through the menus, I don't find that to be very intuitive and the physical buttons, they are designed too similarly to the power buttons. So with this monitor, I find myself switching between HDR, Adobe RGB, um, the different color modes quite often. And sometimes I need to power off the monitor. I find that sometimes I press the buttons uh, wrongly by mistake quite often and that's quite irritating. So the button designs could be better. Next thing I want to talk about are the ports. So Thunderbolt 3 ports, great but the power delivery is just 60 watts so nowadays there are laptops that require more power for charging so 60 watts may not be enough depending on the laptop or the USB-C or Thunderbolt 3 device that you are using another thing is about the HDMI and display port so this supports HDMI 2B which is great because it supports HDR but the display port is just version 1.2 which does not support HDR so I'm not sure why they included display port 1.2 and not 1.4 so those are the only three negative aspects of this monitor that I discovered. Now when it comes to using this monitor for work to create content, um, the quality is excellent. Using the Spider 5 Pro color calibrator that I have, I measured 88% DCI-P3, 98% Adobe RGB, 92% NTRC, and 100% RSRGB, and the typical maximum brightness is 635 nits, but if you have HDR, it goes up even higher. So color accuracy for this monitor, it's really good. Not as good compared to what's being advertised, but it's really good, especially uh, for Adobe RGB. This is a true 10-bit IPS panel, so color accuracy is good as expected. The thing with this monitor is because there are so many display attributes you can change and adjust, uh, color calibration, 
is not that easy so you may want to uh, find out the recommended settings uh, from the user manual or from online to get the best possible uh, calibration this is the card calibration software provided by asus so you can use this to calibrate your display as well and with this software you can choose to calibrate using a 3x3 or a 5x5 grid to ensure that the brightness is uniform throughout the display this display has a matte surface so it's non-glossy if you have a strong light source on the side you're going to see the light being diffused into the white haze that you see here but if you have shading hoods it's going to minimize that and if you are just looking at the monitor straight on it's going to look fine now the viewing angles quite good but if you were to view the display let's say my head is here and i'm looking there there is going to be slight color shift let me change the viewing angle of the display and see if my camera can capture the color shift now my eye can detect slight color shift but i'm not sure if my camera can do so anyway if you are working as per normal looking at the display straight on color shift um, from the viewing angle it's not going to be a problem the brightness uniformity for this display it looks good and this monitor it has 1152 local dimming zones which means if you have um, small areas of white you are not going to see the white glow um, around the black for example in this case the backlight for this display it's very uniform and when the display is totally black there is no backlight bleeding at all i don't even notice that the display is even on when the screen is totally dark one thing i notice about this display is when you are using it in a dark environment let's say your room it has no lights when you view the display from an angle areas with high contrast there is going to be this glow i'm not sure if you can see it but let me try and move this palette around and you can see how the glow actually follows that palette and let me create a white dot here can you see how the glow appears and how the glow disappears so that effect is only visible when you are looking at the display from an angle if you view at it from the front the LCD is able to block out the LEDs behind properly but not from an angle so whether or not you can see the glow will depend on the viewing angle and where the high contrast areas are so for example here I have some palettes on the right side I am not able to see any glow from this area here but I can detect some glow from this area because uh, from where I am I am not looking at this area straight on so I can see slight glow there at the edges I'm not sure if my camera can capture that but for this areas here um, I'm almost looking at this area straight on so no glow at all to my visible to what my eye can visibly detect the brightness that I'm working with right now it's set to 20% and that's about 200 nits as measured so um, with this typical usage this display is actually not giving out a lot of heat so the fans are not needed but if you view HDR content for long periods of time then yes the fans will kick in this 32 inch display supports a resolution of 4k that's 3842 by 2160 and that's a very good resolution to work with on a 32 inch display like this everything appears to be very sharp and the user interface elements the buttons the menus the panels they all look uh, quite big and easy to click comfortable on the eyes as mentioned much earlier this display the main selling point is rec 2020 uh, adobe vision and hdr support so you don't need to get such an expensive monitor just to edit photos because you can get much cheaper adobe rgb displays that have good color accuracy to edit photos 
So for this display, the ASUS uh, display, it's really for professionals who edit HDR videos, who work with those color profiles. So this ASUS display is supposed to be a reference monitor, which is to say that when you edit HDR content, you should be able to view back the HDR content in actual HDR. This is so that you can see the actual HDR. So for example, when you want to output a video to a HDR TV or HDR capable phone, uh, you will be able to see how it would look like on this display. If you're just editing HDR on a typical Adobe RGB monitor, the monitor is not going to have the same level of brightness as a HDR monitor, so you're not going to be able to see the true HDR effect, the difference between the contrast levels of the lightest lights, the brightest brights versus the darkest dark. Right, I have freeze this frame to show you the much higher dynamic range of HDR. So with HDR, you can see the shadow details in the shadow areas as well as highlights. So here I can actually see the details, the individual strands of hair here. I'm not sure if my camera can pick that up. But anyway, this is in HDR, so you are supposed to be able to see details in the shadow areas and highlights together in the same scene. Let me switch over to non-HDR to let you see the difference. Here's the same screenshot, but notice the shadow areas here. This is now just one big patch of black. You're not able to see individual strands of hair. You cannot see the highlights uh, as clearly as before. And some of the colors of the hair here, they are just being crushed into black. So the contrast level here, it's not as good compared to HDR and overall contrast for the film for this frame at least uh, it's not as um, strong compared to hdr so even on this phone i can see the contrast it's much better and also the highlights the bright areas that they are much brighter compared to what i have here the non-hdr uh, version so in order to match the output source i will have to view this on hdr so having a reference monitor like this will let you have an idea of how your content will look like on other devices. All right, to conclude, things I like, build quality, the color performance, HDR capabilities, Thunderbolt 3 support, 4K resolution, and this 32 inch display, which is really nice to look at. Things I don't like, the flimsy shading hood and the power uh, button placement and design. So overall, this is a quality monitor, but is it worth the money? That is a question I cannot answer because I do not uh, create HDR content for a living. So um, only you can decide whether or not it's worth the money uh, for you. So this monitor is definitely way out of my league. The monitors I use are Adobe RGB monitors because I deal with web and print. So I'll put some links to other video reviews for the ASUS monitor in the video description below. There are a lot of other reviewers who have reviewed this monitor, so you may want to um, see what they have to say. All right, thanks for watching this video. I hope it's helpful. See you in the next one. Bye.